Hello and welcome to another booktube video from me Lauren from Lauren and the Books and today is my October wrap up. Now I haven't looked, normally I do a bit of prep for my October wrap up and I sort of have a little look back through the books and think oh what did I think and have a look and see what star rating I gave it on Goodreads etc etc but this time I was just like I'm just gonna do it I'm just gonna sit down it's really really rainy outside I've had the heating on I know I've got a t-shirt on now a Moana t-shirt at that um, but it's really rainy outside the lighting's not great I've got all me a little no November. What do you think about my November corner, by the way? Is everyone enjoying it? I feel like I might change this monthly to different because I had like a Halloween corner for October, and then these I got these were a pound in the pound in Poundland, and then they're just like little fake tea lights in there. Aren't they cute? Aren't they adorable? So yeah, I thought I'd go for a sort of wintry theme before Christmas hits and things really happen, but. Yeah, I can't even remember what I was saying. So yeah, so it's a bit casual, casual wrap up. Let's see how we go. I'm gonna mention, the, so I read nine books in October, which is pretty good going. Um, I'm gonna mention um, the two books that I don't have here with me. The first one was an audio book I listened to. I listened to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows on audio, um, on Audible. I now have the complete series of Harry Potter on Audible and I adore them. Um, if you have read Harry Potter before, I urge you to also listen to the audio book because it's a completely different experience. Stephen Fry narrates and it is amazing. Amazing. I pick out things that I'd completely forgotten about, I re-remember things, I can picture things in my mind's eye which aren't related with the film, which when I'm rereading them I often think about uh, relating them to the film, which is also an experience I get when reading the illustrated editions. Um, when I read those I'm sort of like, oh yeah I can imagine that without thinking about the film, but when I just read the paperbacks I always think about the film, so it's really really good. My dad actually said, my dad's listening, uh, listening to them as well, oh Minnie's been so cute, she's just got herself a toy out of her box and is playing with it on the floor. Um, my dad said the same. He says he really is able to um, use his imagination much more when listening to it, but I adored it. Five stars, obviously, uh, and looking forward to re-listening to them for the rest of my life. Um, and the next book that I've got is actually, peaking high, my best book of the month. Um, I got it out from the library. I am in the process of buying myself a copy of it because I just adore it so much. It is Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. Um, I've mentioned this in my favourites video, so you, this might not come as a surprise to you, but this is a collection of um, short stories, like literally one-page stories about uh, various and fantastic and amazing women um, throughout history. The illustrations are gorgeous. Each um, there, there's there's not quite a hundred. I think basically almost every story has a new um, illustrator illustrating a picture of the woman that it's talking about. It is just gorgeous and beautiful. And I've recently found out that Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls Two is coming out in the US. I believe on the 30th of November. I don't think it's out in the UK until uh, March. But I will definitely. That is something I will definitely be getting my hands on because I just think it's the most beautiful, amazing, and wonderful book. Book. so much diversity in there so much girl power I adored it five stars mwah, 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 mwah. loved it anyway on to the books that I've actually got here so I'll work sort of like back from what I first read the first month etc oh, Minnie I can't take my eyes off her she's being so cute she's sort of like got like a little baby otter she's got a little toy she's sort of like rolling around like this with it Minnie Mm, nice. Uh, the first book that I read this month was The Invisible Child and the Fir Tree by Tove Janssen. Now this was kindly sent to me um, by um, Waterstones Oxf uh, Oxfam, by Waterstones. This is for sale in Waterstones for 4.99, um, and each, um, I believe, uh, the sale of the book, the, the money from the book goes all to Oxfam to help with Women and Girls Project worldwide. Um, so already I was like, hello, I am into that. Um, I don't really remember much about Moomins. I remember them being on the telly. I don't really remember much about seeing them. I couldn't remember any of the names or anything like that. David was terrified of Moomins when he was younger, he told me. Um, but this was really cute and really fun, and um, it's illustrated throughout. It's just two really short stories um one is a bit Christmassy, so i enjoyed that um and i just think it's a really nice idea um and i think it's a beautiful book i love the um the front cover and just all the illustrations and i feel like this is a great sort of stocking filler idea or something if um for a secret santa for to, to be able to provide somebody with a physical thing where also all the proceeds are going to helping women worldwide so really enjoyed that I think it's a beautiful wonderful book and a wonderful wonderful message behind it the next book I read was this must be the place by Maggie O'Farrell I read this for my book club at work I really enjoyed this so this follows um Daniel Sullivan um who is a man in his I've probably age him sort of like late 40s and he's had quite a life up until now not and um, lived in various places with various people what I really enjoyed about this now I really like a multiple perspective book 
But what I really enjoyed about this was that you heard from multiple perspectives at different times during Daniel's life. So when they knew him at different times, it might be hearing from his daughter, um, who knows him, he didn't hear from his daughter, hearing from his son, who is talking about him when he was a young, young boy, or hearing from a, um, a friend who was friends with him at college, um, hearing from himself now, hearing from his, um, his current wife when he, she first met him. And I really enjoyed that sort of like piecing together of who knew what about Daniel at what stages in his life. I really, really enjoyed that. It's also set quite a lot in Ireland. I really enjoy books set in Ireland. Um, and I just love this. I thought it was a really good romp, a really, really good read. It's a big old book. It is like, don't get me wrong. It's a big old book, but, there was bits in it where I was really into it and I just I just found it really enjoyable. I thought the characters were really well fleshed out. Um, there was times where I really liked uh, characters. There was a few characters I didn't really like. And yeah, I was really impressed with this and um, sort of come away from it thinking, mm, I'm really glad I read that. So I will definitely read more of Maggie O'Farrell's stuff. I have previously read, um, I've got my list there for uh, things, things to take when I go to centre parks. I've previously read Instructions for a Heatwave, which I don't really remember much about it, um, but I want to read more of her stuff and I particularly want to read her um, autobiography that she's just written. I believe it's called I Am, I Am, I Am and it's about um, her brushes with death. So think her writing's amazing, really loved the sort of like narrative of this, enjoyed, would recommend. Uh, the next book I read, now the next two books are both books that I read as part of the Gothic Read Along, which was hosted by Jenny King on uh, Goodreads, which I really enjoyed. So the first book I read was Wuthering Heights. Now, I, um, I've read Wuthering Heights pretty much every year for about five or six years. Um, every time I've read it, I've really enjoyed it. This year, however, look, like last year, so I've always given it five stars. Last year, I gave it four stars. This year, I've given it three stars. And I actually feel like I probably won't reread it again for quite a while. Um, it was always something I used to enjoy rereading when the weather got colder, and particularly in October, it was a great time to read it. But this time, I, I felt really annoyed with the characters. Like, I feel like there was a lot of whining going on from all characters. And there was a lot of, and I remember talking to Mercedes about this on our podcast and she, her saying, um, if they just sat down and had a conversation with one another, none of this shit would have happened. And that is completely true. It almost feels a bit like YA, like in a sort of like, oh God, will I, won't I, blah, blah, blah way. And yeah, I, I mean, by all means, like, it's an enjoyable classic. It's very gothic. It's very good for the season. And also I really like get it um in that i read it and understand the storyline and things like that which doesn't always happen with classics for me um but this time around i was just a bit like come on guys pull yourself together like they are all fucking awful in this book all the characters are awful but yeah i, I enjoyed rereading it and it's a perfect book to reread um in in like windy windy climbs um but yeah i probably won't reread this for a while now hmm. Take from that what you will. So the next book I read was also a book for the Gothic Read Along, and that was The Loney by Andrew Michael Hurley. Now, this was a complete like pleasure to me. I really, really enjoyed reading this. So I bought this for my sister's boyfriend, who is now her husband, a few years ago for Christmas. And I borrowed this copy off of him. I must return it to him. And when I said to him, well, how did you get on with it? He said, bleak. Now it was bleak, but I really enjoyed it. So it tells the story of two brothers um, who go to, on a sort of religious pilgrimage with their parents and the uh, the parents' church in order to get one of the brothers healed, who um, he's mute. And I would probably say he's suffering from some sort of... Um, suffering I mean he's got learning difficulties it's never explicitly said what is um what is the deal with him but it's probably that he's got some sort of le like severe learning difficulties he doesn't speak he um he sort of interacts uh, through um sim symbol um signals and things like that and um yeah and I can't tell you what happens any more than that because that's the whole point of the book um but yeah I really enjoyed this it is atmospheric and wonderful and I was really on the edge of my seat the characters the mother in this is absolutely vile she's horrible um and there's lot so much sort of like one-upmanship trying to get one up on um trying to get in favor of uh, the new uh, the new priest who is a younger priest than the priest they had before and the priest they had before wasn't such a nice character but the the ladies in the church much preferred him because he was more sort of stoic in his ways of um bringing religion into their lives and there's just so many themes in here and so much going on i really really enjoyed it it was perfect again like wuthering heights was to read um in the Season, but yeah I really liked it and I just want to share with you the first line of the book because it sets the sort of autumnal and gothic theme perfectly it says it had certainly been a wild end to the autumn 
On the heath, a gale stripped the glorious blaze of colours from Kenwood to Parliament Hill in a matter of hours, leaving several old oaks and beeches dead. Mists and silence followed, and then, after a few days, there were only the smell of rotting and bonfires. So yeah, it's really written beautifully. I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars, and I'm really looking forward to reading Andrew Michael Hurley's new book, which has only recently come out, but I can't think what it's called, but I'm looking forward to reading it. So yeah, well done. Uh, the next book I read was part of the Autumn Read Along, and that was Fen by Daisy Johnson. So this is a collection of um, short stories by Daisy Johnson about the Fenlands, where she lived and grew up lights just gone off um i there were some of these that i really really enjoyed Ooh, gotta get my bookmark out uh, there were some of these that i really did enjoy there were some of these where i was a bit like man now there's the the, the, the sort of I felt like the first three or four stories were my favourite stories from the collection and then from then on it all went a bit sort of flat for me so I feel like I ended up giving this two stars which probably might be a bit harsh as I did enjoy some of the first um, stories but I just it could have been shorter for me I feel like and um, I really enjoyed the style of writing but yeah it just sort of tailed off for me um, I also hit 7,000 subscribers whilst uh, I was doing that and I've done a little folding my page over and just written the date that I hit 7,000 subscribers. So yeah, gave it two stars. Um, I believe she's got some uh, a novel coming out which I'll be interested in reading but for me the story sort of tailed off towards the end. Uh, the next book also wasn't a very good one. Um, I gave it one star. It was The Couple Next Door by um, Shari Lapina. Now I read this as part of my online book club. Um, it was a thriller. The, um, the, the guys in my online book club are very fond of thrillers, um, but I am starting to become not so fond of thrillers. I was saying, like, as, as part of the discussion with online book club, the past few years I've read a, one sort of standout thriller that I've loved. So last year was, was it Girl on the Train? So basically, Gone Girl, Girl on the Train, um, Before I Go to Sleep, and what was the other one I was talking about? Oh, um, I Let You Go. So those sort of have been, I've read those like one a year for the past four years, really enjoyed all of them. And I still haven't found that thriller this year. And I hoped this would be it. I mean, it's got something here. The most talked about thriller of the year. Now, for me, this was not the most talked about thriller of the year. Something that happens, and do avert your ears if you're going to read this or are in the process of reading it. So within, literally, the first, so it tells the story of, um, a couple who go to a party next door um, and leave their child at home because the person whose party they're going to, they don't like kids and they just say, oh, I'm just going to leave it at home. And they'll go home every night. Uh, they'll go They'll go home every half hour to check on the baby, blah, 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 blah. So, um, some, so the babe, they get home after the end of the night and the baby's missing. Um, and then um, an investigation into this missing child um, goes ahead. So something that happens is that the, the police officer sort of turns up and says, mm, I bet this is what happened, blah, 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 blah. And that is exactly what happened. And they literally tell you within the first sort of 20 pages that, that that's what the police officer thinks happened. And then the whole way through, I was thinking, well, this can't be what happened because the police officer's already said that's what's happened. And it was. So it felt like it had really spoiled it for me. Um, I felt like the characters were really weak. It was just a bit, pff, it was really rushed at the end. It just wasn't for me. And yeah, I gave it one start. The only reason I finished it is because it was for my online book club. I mean, it was easy, um, but yeah, it, it's not for me. So really am looking for I mean, I'm not even going to get a chance to read it now because I'm reading non-fiction in November and then Christmas books in December. So this year's sort of gone by without having this amazing sort of thriller, which is a shame because when I do read those amazing thrillers, I do really enjoy them. But yeah, haven't felt like that this year. Gave this one star. So the last book I'm going to talk about is The Book of Dust by Philip Pullman. I don't feel like I've seen anyone review this yet. So I wonder what um, people's thoughts are on it. I really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars um, and I gave the rest of the um, His Start Materials um, books five stars. I feel like the four star rating is a 4.5 star and it probably could and probably will go up to a five star on a reread, which I definitely will be doing of this. Um, however, I was talking to Jen about this when we were on the book two meetup and I was almost like, when I'm reading it, I'm like, I can't believe it's here. I can't believe it's here. So I feel like I didn't take in as much because of my enjoyment and excitement levels of it actually being here. <laughs> I've almost hampered my reading a bit. Um, so I feel like maybe I will eventually get to that five star read, but my, my reading experience of this was like, bloody hell, I can't believe it. So yeah, I really enjoyed this. Um, I will try not to give any spoilers away because I want people to go to it and enjoy it also. Um, I really liked the fact that, it, that this is not a spoiler, it runs um, sort of alongside the series. So you hear from characters such as a baby Lyra, you don't hear from her, but she appears in there and uh, Mrs. Coulter and Lord Asriel and things like that. What I will say is there are some adult themes in here, guys. Like there is a lot of swearing, a lot of 
the F word, like I never say the F word, a lot of the fuck word, um, there is themes of, there's a lot of violence in here, there's themes of um, sexual assault, of uh, mental health, um, of there's a chase in here which really had me like on the edge of my seat and it's quite a long-winded chase as well so I'm like oh my god when is this gonna end like the, the, the basic theme of this book is there is a chase going on um and yeah I really enjoyed it I'm looking forward to seeing what else comes of it because I really love Malcolm so you follow Malcolm <clears throat> who is helping to, um, to, to, to get Lyra away um, from a place after a flood and get her to a place of safety. Um, he is joined by a, a girl whose name I've bloody forgotten. Is it Katie? It's Alice. Um, who is joined by a girl called Alice. Um, there's demons in here. There's um, witches. It's, it's got everything you want that's in the dark materials. But yeah, pretty, pretty adult. And um, since reading parts of it, I still feel surprised when I see it. It's sort of like in the children's section or the, I'm like oh god like that is pretty adult but very enjoyable very much looking forward to rereading it I feel like maybe next year um I might read this first and then read the ne uh, the next three because I reread the dark materials on the lead up to this um and really this this goes before um so yeah so I gave this for four four to four and a half stars and I'm looking forward to rereading it so would really be interested in people's thoughts on this if you thought it was really adult as well or if I'm just a bit of a wimp um but yeah so those are the books that I read in the month of October what did you guys read in the month of October very much interested to hear um I am currently in the thick of non-fiction November so I finished one non-fiction book already um I've got three more on the go and an audiobook four non-fiction books on the go go me um I'm really enjoying it so far really really enjoying it um and looking forward to hearing and what everybody else is reading so yeah let me know what you read in october let me know if you've read any of these books um and i will speak to you all again on do, 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 wednesday uh when i see you for another book video